The Hill had an awesome article yesterday about the state of the Democratic race. And listen to this title. I love this title. Uh, it's how Senate Democrats are trying to deal with Bernie Sanders. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's so condescending. How Senate Democrats are trying to deal with Bernie Sanders. <laughs> that's just so indicative of the elite and the establishment. So the piece is particularly illuminating uh, because it shows the attitude of those in power versus uh, Bernie Sanders. So they report here, Senate Democrats discussed how to handle Bernie Sanders and his supporters at a private caucus meeting on Tuesday. The lawmakers met in a closed-door session days after Senator Barbara Boxer was shouted down at the Nevada Democratic Convention, an incident that shook Democrats and raised fears about a chaotic fight at the party's upcoming national convention that might cost the party the White House. All right, let me just pause here for a second, because uh, if anything costs us the White House, it would be because Hillary's a shitty candidate. I love how they're already trying to pin it on Bernie Sanders and his supporters. No, they're the ones who are like, Look at the polls! Bernie beats Trump by 13 points on average. Hillary at this point is only up like 4 points on average. There's, in the two most recent polls, she's down to Trump in a general. O okay, these guys are the solution. They're not the problem, but they're trying to pin it on you. They're not trying to pin it on Hillary being a weak candidate. And then also, they're bringing up the Barbara Boxer thing as if, Oh my God, she's the victim. Now, uh, TYT had a, had a video out on this yesterday, and they broke it down perfectly, and they explained how, okay, she's just lying. As she was walking out, she was so scared that she was taunting and blowing kisses to the Bernie supporters who she just fucked over in this uh, convention session. Remember, they axed 58 Bernie delegates over paperwork. That's fucking insane. Of course they're going to be mad. They should be mad. And of course they're going to be loud. They should be loud. But they lied. People said, oh, they threw chairs. Well, Snopes was out with an article on that yesterday saying that's actually totally not true. NPR released, I think, an apology saying uh, we kind of ran with the they threw chair stories. That's not true. There was zero violence. There were zero arrests. There was no chair throwing. Somebody literally picked up a chair and another Bernie supporter comes up, puts it down for them and then hugs them. There's no violence at all. But what do they do? They try to portray, oh my God, they're like Trump supporters. Look how violent they are. Look how crazy they are. I fear for my safety. This is what Barbara Boxer said. You feared so much for it that you were being sarcastic and taunting and blowing kisses on your way out. And remember, nobody's discussing, definitely not in the mainstream media, the rigged voice votes. Those in favor say yay. Those opposed say nay. Okay, uh, which side were we supposed to have? Okay, the, the yays have it. Yays have it, even though the nays had it. So that's why they're mad, and they're trying to just pin it all on the Bernie supporters. Okay, let's continue here because this gets fascinating. The presidential candidate uh, is not chummy with his fellow colleagues. Fellow senators have been known to roll their eyes at his idealistic, some say unrealistic, ideas in private meetings. Sanders is known for speaking out at the sessions. Oh, God, I love that. <laughs> this is Senate Democrats who are admitting... But behind the scenes, yeah, we don't like Bernie Sanders. We fucking hate Bernie Sanders. We roll our eyes when he talks in meetings. He likes to 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 chime in all the time and talk about policies like single payer and and universal education and things like that. And we're like, oh, fucking asshole! Don't you know we're supposed to be sold out to J.P. Morgan Chase and various hedge funds on Wall Street? They don't get it. Like, you know what this reminds me of as I'm going through this? It's like the asshole cool kids in high school who all sit together and fucking circle jerk each other with how bad people they are, and they think that makes them cool. And then you have uh, Bernie Sanders, who's like, you know, the nebbish, loserly kid, but who's actually a good person, who, like, chimes in every once in a while. Like, hey, maybe we shouldn't be dicks. Like, <laughs> oh, look at this fucking asshole, huh? Oh, roll our eyes, this guy's a dick. No, you're the dicks. You're the dicks. They say Democratic senators have given Sanders... A wide berth so far, treading carefully on the question of whether he should drop out of the race due to Clinton's overwhelming delegate lead. But patience is beginning to wear thin. Colleagues are growing more frustrated that an independent whom they welcomed as one of their own into the caucus is now wrecking havoc in the party. Oh, God. Look at that attitude. You want to talk about entitlement. They're like, here this guy is. 
you know, we welcome him into our uh, powerful group of people who are all super corrupt and bought off, and then he doesn't want to be super corrupt and bought off. Look at him running for president and doing well and whatnot. Don't you know you're supposed to get your ass handed to you and then step aside? The Democratic establishment, what's amazing to me is that they are just as insular and they're just as thick-headed as the Republican establishment. Like, the Republican establishment, they're super disconnected from uh, the voters and the people to the point where they have no clue why Donald Trump won. And, you know, we've explained a million times. There's a variety of reasons, but some of the main reasons is that Donald Trump had a populist message. He actually pretended to care about workers and said, I'm not going to cut Social Security and Medicare and all those things while the other people said they would. And then Donald Wins are like, oh, how did he win? Because at least he pretended to care about the people. Whereas on the Democratic side, now they're falling into the same trap. They don't care about the people. All their rhetoric is center-right. And then somebody comes along and he's actually progressive. And he gets a, a fucking very passionate following. And they're like, okay, come on, wrap it up. Let's go back to ripping the people off. What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? So they go on to explain in the article. They're like, what do we do? I don't know. How do we, how do we try to reel in Sanders? And how do we get his supporters on our side? This is getting crazy. And they say, okay, let's leave it to Harry Reid, because Harry Reid was the person who let Bernie into the caucus, and he was, you know, kind of friendly with uh, Bernie Sanders, and they were buddies, and he said, okay, look, I, I can be the one to talk to him, I can be the one to control him, because I'm also kind of an outcast, slash, not really, he just doesn't like going to the cocktail parties, but he does sell out to lobbyists, like all the other Democrats. And uh, so Harry Reid calls Bernie. And Bernie's like, okay, look, obviously I'm going to uh, support the Democrats if need be. Obviously, if it gets to the point where it's Hillary versus Trump, I know Hillary's better. I'm not stupid. But, hey, Harry, did you see what the fuck happened at that Nevada convention the other day? Did you see how 58 of my delegates were snubbed over paperwork? Did you see how low they're willing to go in order to steal two delegates? Did you see that or did you not see that? Do you understand the lies that are being told about my supporters and my delegates or do you not? And Harry Reid's like, oh, shit, I don't think I'm even going to really be able to control him. So uh, they hung up the phone. And then Sanders released a statement they said in a defiant tone, even though it was just saying, of course I denounce all violence, but here's what happened at the convention. And that's when Harry Reid went to the media and said, oh, that was a silly statement. Why would he do that? That's so silly. No, no, no. What's so stunning is it's almost like they all decided at the same time to go into a collective delusion. Everybody in the establishment, whether it's Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Harry Reid, the rest of them in the caucus, because none of, they all want to talk about loud Bernie supporters and, oh my God, isn't this a bad thing? No, they're passionate. They care about their democracy, but they all ignore what happened at the Nevada convention. Nobody wants to talk about the Nevada convention. They want to talk about the talk about the Nevada convention. They want to talk about the response to it. They don't want to talk about what actually happened. They're pretending like the anger exists in a vacuum. And Bernie supporters show up angry and ready to, to scream. No, they were pushed to that point by what happened at the convention. For the 9,000th time, 58 delegates were snubbed over paperwork and then they pretend like, we're not corrupt, we're not rigging this, what are you talking about? Of course the Nevada Democratic Party is in the tank for Hillary Clinton. Some of them are literally her surrogates. Barbara Boxer's on Team Hillary, she spoke at the convention. She was chastising Bernie supporters, then she says, I feel threatened, as she taunts them on the way out. Zero violence. They say people threw chairs. Nobody threw chairs. They're just liars. They're lying. When people are loud, they're loud because they care about the democracy. They care about the result of the process. They don't want it to be rigged. And then all the de people in the Democratic establishment, they ignore everything at the convention. And they go, you know, Bernie, your, your supporters are beginning to be a little bit of a problem. Now, I saved the best line for the end here. Because this was buried in the article. It was almost like a throwaway line in the article. But it is so goddamn telling. And it may be my favorite line of all time. They say, Sanders is also something of a loner who shows little interest in hanging out with lobbyists. They say that in the article, and they don't even understand the implications of that. <laughs> like, they say it like, you know, he's a little different. He's a little bit of an outsider, you know? But they're not saying it in a way that's, like, positive. They're saying it in a way that's, like, a tone from within that Democratic caucus and that Democratic establishment that sees his supporters as a problem. Like, yeah, you know, he's something of a loner. He shows little interest in hanging out with lobbyists. 
Whereas the rest of them are like, oh, yes, I love lobbyists. Let's sip some champagne and eat some caviar and let me massage your ball sack. That's where we're at right now. So Harry Reid, the Democratic establishment, they're totally disconnected from the people. They don't get it. They want to ignore the fact that the, the process is rigged. They want to, uh, you know, basically get Bernie supporters to vote for Hillary without doing anything. They don't want to earn it. They don't want to earn it. They don't care about the policy substance. To them, it's all about party unity and party loyalty and our team needs to win. But you're not listening to the Bernie supporters. They're saying, hey, you're not doing your fucking job. Therefore, you haven't earned my vote. You got to earn my vote, bitch. This is supposed to be a representative democracy in a constitutional republic. It's amazing how they're so insular within this institution that literally has a 4% approval rating. People in the Democratic caucus, they're like, ah, come on, Bernie, why are you acting crazy? Bernie's approval rating is through the fucking roof. People love that dude. He, did you know, recent poll, he's the number one most liked and most trusted senator. Literally. But the people who are less liked, and the people who are more corrupt, and the people who have a 4% approval rating collectively, they're like, oh, come on, rabble rouser, what are you doing? Come hang out with the cool kids and fuck over all the constituents. And Bernie says no, because Bernie can't be bought.